Hey guys, welcome back. Today let's talk about Anxious People, the book versus the movie. Let's go. So Anxious People is a novel written by Frederick Backman. Uh, this was released back in 2020 and then it was made into a mini series that's available on Netflix and this was released in December of 2021. So just as a warning going into this video, I didn't particularly love either of these works. Um, so personally, I just felt like they were both just so like painfully fine. Um, they were like incredibly average and just borderline boring. I do have to say though, I did think that the show was really well shot. Um, I thought the casting and the actors did a really good job. So this show is in Swedish. So I watched the dub version of the show um, and I thought that was actually really well done and I didn't feel like it was distracting from the show at all. Also just another warning, this video will have all of the spoilers. So just be aware of that if you haven't seen or read the book. Um, then also before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe if you want more book videos. So this story centers on a hostage situation, um, which sounds a lot more dramatic than it actually is. Um, so we have this bank robber who attempts to rob a cashless bank, and obviously this doesn't go well. And while the robber is running away, um, they hide in this apartment, and this apartment's having a real estate viewing, so it's full of people. So once the hostage situation is then resolved, the police are shocked when they go up to the apartment and find that it's empty and they have no clue as to where this robber could have gone. When reading the book, the order of the storytelling um, was set up to have like these big reveals about the characters, um, backstories or like plot points that were supposed to be like shocking to the reader. And with how the book was organized, the storytelling method worked for the most part. The book jumped around in time and it jumped from character to character. It gave us little pieces of this puzzle like as we read along. We also had many chapters that were just police interrogation of these hostages. And I think these parts to me were just a drag to read, honestly. And my biggest issue with this book was that there were almost too many like grand reveals. And this became really predictable pretty quickly. And I learned to expect that there was just going to be something deeper going on or that something that you thought was going to be one way was going to be revealed to be something different down the line. So with how many characters that the story had and then like how many times we had like these plot reveals and like these twists and stuff, it almost made it like too predictable to read and almost made it too unenjoyable. Now with the show series, it is organized a little bit differently than the book. So the series is six episodes in total and they range from about 23 minutes to like 35-ish minutes. Um, and then like, <laughs> it's just a side note, like thank God they weren't longer because the, this series took me way longer to finish than it should have. I watched the first three episodes all at once and then I was just like, a little sick of it and then like I totally drug my feet like trying to get through the last three episodes but I did it and we're here so with the series episode one starts with um, the setup of the whole story and we see the entire hostage situation from like the police point of view and then in the remaining five episodes each episode centers on a specific person or couple from the apartment and we get like their backstory and their point of view from the apartment and like what they're up to now that it's all over so in episode two it centers on Anna Lena and Roger and they're a couple who purchase apartments and renovate them. In episode three, it focuses on Zara and she was at the viewing and um, also a man in a bunny suit and we'll get um, more to them later. Um, so episode four is centering on Ro and Julia and they are having a baby soon and they're looking for their first home together. Episode five is on Estelle and she's an older lady who is pretending to be at the viewing, but the big surprise is that the apartment is actually hers and that was supposed to be like a big reveal. And then finally in episode six, it's centered on the bank robber and what led her, like, yes, her, like that was supposed to be another big reveal too, the fact that she's a woman, but what led her to rob the bank and like her side of things. So initially the show did start out like a bit campy, like it had some funny moments and Jack, the police officer's like awful funny haircut. And like, I thought it was gonna be a fun watch initially. Like the first episode was, was pretty humorous. Ah, wait, so, ow, what happened here? Hit me in the face. What the hell are you doing? Bloody yes. What the hell was that? Uh, what? Is that a lie? What the hell are they doing? They want a pizza. 
but pizza. And the book also had humor in it. And so I thought going into it, this was going to like translate into the series. But like the further we got into it, I felt like the show just started taking itself too seriously. We had all of this built up drama that didn't amount to anything. And then there was just all of this boring dialogue and the characters would would like have these like grand revelations and they would like cry in each other's arms. And I had a hard time like feeling their emotion, like it would come up and I just kind of be like, why are we crying? And I did find that the show did keep a lot of the dialogue from the book, but it didn't translate well into like the format of the show very well. So in the book, the periods of dialogue and like the long conversations worked really well and I felt like they were really needed. But in the show, the long conversations like really highlighted just how boring the dialogue actually was. I found it to just be really awkward to just sit there and like watch these characters have just very boring kind of dry conversations. And I do just want to touch on a few specific things that irritated me. So the first being like, why was the grand reveal of the robber being a lady such a big deal? In the book, the author, I felt like had a way easier time of hiding this fact and having it be a surprise. But then when I was reading it and I learned that the bank robber was a lady, I was just kind of like, okay, okay. Like it, it didn't really add much to the story. And then in the show, like right away, Jack, the police officer, when he's trying to figure out like who the robber is, he keeps referencing the robber as like a man. And my husband watched the first episode with me and he's like, he, he's like, that was totally a lady that robbed that bank. Like it looks like a lady. So like right there, like the grand reveal of her being a her in the show was just kind of ruined because you could just see her standing right there. And in the show, Jack was obsessed with finding out who this robber was. I think because he had like nothing better to do. We have scenes of like this whiteboard with all of their pictures and he's interviewing them and he was just obsessed and he was this obsessive in the book as well um but they diverted a little bit and they had the interviews taking place like after they released everybody to go home like days later like after the new year and in the book it all pretty much took place within like the same day like they're doing the interrogations like directly after so they definitely elongated that so it seemed like he was putting even more effort in because he's tracking these people down to interview them versus just having them at the police station but it was really weird like the robber didn't steal anything like nobody was actually hurt from the hostage situation and this robber just supposedly disappeared and by the way the robber wasn't in the apartment anymore when the police went in there because Estelle the lady who owned the apartment had a spare key to the empty apartment next door and that's where the robber hid when the police were looking for her. So it's just weird to me that Jack didn't have anything better to do at his job. And then we learned that the robber attempted to rob the bank to get money for a deposit on an apartment so that she wouldn't lose her kids in a custody battle. And then once Jack learns this, he decides to just let it go. <laughs> All of that hard work for nothing. And then my next irritation is at the end of the first episode, it gave away too much of the story. Already at the end of this episode, we know that everyone is safe, everyone's fine, and we see all of these hostages leaving the apartment, and we see this bunny man. And this man is supposed to be like a big reveal in the book. Um, and Elena had hired him to crash the showing so that they could try to get the apartment at a cheaper price. But us seeing the bunny leaving at the end of the first episode with everybody else and knowing he's gonna come up somewhere in the story completely ruins the surprise of him being revealed in the bathroom. And then also his character in the book just kind of confused me. Like, I didn't understand, like, is it supposed to be funny? And like, also with it being in the show, like it just didn't match the tone of the rest of the story. So now I need to talk about the biggest difference between the book and the movie. So in the book, we have Zara and she is a bank manager. And we learned that like 10 ish years ago, she denied a loan to a man. And then he went and he killed himself by jumping off of a bridge in town. The next day after this happens, she receives a letter from him in the mail and she carries around this letter with her. And then all of these years later, she's unable to open it because um, she's carrying around this guilt. Um, she feels like it was her fault that he did this. Um, so then her and Jack, the police officer, are somewhat connected. Um, so Jack was on the bridge that day and when he was like a preteen and he had tried to get the man to stop, but he was unable to. Um, and this is what inspired him to become a police officer. So Zara starts going to a therapist 
and we get all of these chapters with her at this therapist's office. And later we learned that the therapist had also tried to kill herself off of this same bridge after the first man, but Jack had actually succeeded in stopping her. And Zara had watched um, their like kind of confrontation like while well, this happened. But I was a little disappointed that they had cut um, the therapist completely from the show. Um, it was very blaringly like obvious to me that she wasn't there um, just because I felt like it was such a big plot point in the book. So for all of these years, Zara has been going to these apartment views viewings um, of apartments that face the bridge so that she can stand on the balcony and look at the bridge and basically just think about this man that she feels very guilty about. And then in the end of the story, she finally decides to open this letter and all it says is it wasn't your fault. And also in the show, um, they show her opening the letter and instead of it just being the one line, it's like a long page. Um, I think because it would be kind of like a little disappointing to open it up and just show that it's like one line. So they did make that to make it like just a little bit more interesting. So now with the show, Zara has the same initial setup. Like she's a bank manager. She denies a loan to a man. He kills himself after Jack tries to stop him. Um, he gives Jack the letter to take to Zara. In turn, we learn that she went to this apartment viewing because she had discovered that it's the childhood home of the man who had killed himself. Um, and then we also learn that Estelle was his mom and she still lives in this apartment. And then Estelle tells Jack that her son had killed himself because he had been diagnosed with terminal cancer and didn't want to proceed with the treatments. So for the show plot, I liked that they made Estelle and Zara and Jack connected in that way. Um, but the way that they did it and didn't really make sense for me, like why would he go and apply for a loan from Zara? And then when she denies him, go and like kill himself because of a completely different reason. So for me, that's kind of like the biggest thing that I found interesting that they changed. So overall, this story strives to teach us that everyone has something going on in their lives. Everyone has a story, everyone has a struggle. And in the end, these characters are all now connected and they're seemingly better off because of this hostage situation. Um, they're all connected now and they've stayed in touch afterwards. So the robber and her kids are now living with Estelle. Ro and Julia have moved into the empty apartment next door. Anna, Lena, and Roger are helping with the renovations of this apartment. Um, and Zara and the bunny guy are like kind of dating. So their stories ended nicely together. On the story's surface, I liked the premise. I think it's a cool message, and I especially thought the show did a good job of showing everybody coming together afterwards. Unfortunately, for the vast majority of the story, I just felt like the execution was boring, and that goes for the book and the show. Thanks for watching today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye!